to protect your soul.
town to town From London to Taiwan I've been all around the globe Trying to protect your soul Uh, hello guys, welcome to the second uh, part of this tutorial. Um, so we were previously trying to make a a, a game project, uh, kind of like an uh, retro game style. We were gonna make a new game project. Um, so we were trying to recreate Atari Breakout in a 3D world space. So let's um, you know um, just get a recap of what we've been doing uh, previously. I'm um, just going to be using this board over here to help us visualize. Yeah, um, it's going to get a couple of, yeah. So, um, well, so what we did before is we did some basic level design. We made a kind of like a, a platform like this, where there is a paddle, um, there is a ball, which goes off in a direction that we have set also. And there are hit bricks uh, all over the map where, uh, you know, if you, you have to hit the brick a certain amount of times displayed by the number above it and uh, kind of break the brick uh, that way. And each time you break a brick, you get a, a specific point awarded to that. So we have done this much uh, in the past uh, in the past tutorial. So let's get ahead and try to finish today uh, a little bit more about uh, game development. Um, so today we're going to be covering, uh, we're going to try covering two things. First is uh, we're going to be covering um, uh, how to make uh, game states. So what are states? So basically uh, we're going to be like trying to get uh, different levels of the game, like uh, uh, like different uh, phases exactly. Uh, so like first we're going to have like the ready uh, to play uh, phase. And then we're gonna be having like a small countdown, yeah. Um, just gonna have a countdown also. And then next, what we're gonna do is gonna obviously have our playing phase. So like the game is in playing mode. And then we're gonna be having a a, a game over, a, a game over phase, and a game completed, obviously. So, yep, this is uh, going to be like uh, some of the phases, uh, the states that we're going to be uh, trying to achieve in our game today. So, I guess let's get ahead and try to implement this. Yeah. So, let's go back to our editor. Let's pop it up. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so, 
as you can see this is what uh, we did in our previous uh, um, previous uh, time uh, you might feel like stuff are different a bit over here but that's not there's nothing much different um, just a little bit of extra level designing and you know making the level look a bit more cooler that's all that's all that's been done over here and uh, so let's just go into our, our different blueprints first is this the ball blueprint um, I left some space over here because we're going to be covering some code that's going to be coming on this side then um, we have the normal the add actor world offset break hit result paddle casting and then we have all this max for the physics uh, implementation and everything and uh, oh, okay closed uh, thing by mistake yes keep this open and yeah I just made a new texture you can easily change your textures from here itself um, I just found this in the uh, starter content so I decided to use it and looks pretty cool um, also some changes which I might have made is that I must have unticked uh, some light physics over here and uh, uh, disabled gravity for our ball uh, which would enable us to move the ball in this 3d space so let's get a view of how this uh, ball works you know you can see it's working smooth and nice and awesome you can see the physics you can see the ball bouncing yeah everything looks great i think this looks perfect yeah um yeah so this is like how exactly how we envisioned our game to be so looks pretty cool uh so this is what uh, we built um in our initial tutorial and now we're just gonna go and continue from here and yeah so we broke our break and then it's game over but so we're gonna be like uh, defining states widgets main menu stuff like that in this tutorial so let's go over some changes that we need to make um before that um yeah so mainly all of our states we're going to be defining in our ball game mode um previously we just added this much only in our uh event begin play tab but this time we're going to be having a lot of other stuff especially the game states so um coming on first um we're going to be uh having a custom event that we're going to start off with here so let's get a custom event and we're going to have a set game state uh, uh so we're gonna name our custom event as a set game state and uh, we're gonna add our own input just keep a new input and uh we're gonna name this state uh, state of, of the game yeah it's gonna call this over here now before we continue a bit more on ahead um i just had to add uh explain about this one file that i added into this game so these are all the different states of the game that um, we have um, kind of like uh, added. So we're going to be having a ready state, a countdown state, an oops state. So basically oops is like, um, you know, I lost one life, but the game can't stop there. We got to restart, but at that same point. So that's what oops state is. Then we have a game over state, a level completed state, a playing uh, state, a pause state, and a game completed state. Uh, we have this extra state in case we have like multiple levels that we're going to be designing. Um, other than that, it's normal. And then we have a playing pause and a game completed. Um, I'll explain how you build this file. Um, just right click over here, go to blueprints. And the second last option, you'll see enumeration. So basically, this is an enumeration file or uh, like a kind of like you can explain it as a list where you have a list of items. You know, like a drop down menu and you can choose which state of the game you want it to be and in obviously in this state of game um a uh, short form of enumeration is enum we usually refer uh, to this as enum in our game um so uh what we're going to do is in our custom event we're going to be referencing that very same list by searching for it so just write state of game um and you'll get um the the, the enum um variable and uh, you know let's do one thing before we get ahead um kind of like um let's let's uh promote this to a variable let's promote this to a variable and uh okay so we have uh this as our variable gonna compile it save it and our default value is to be ready and it's like you know leave uh no, we don't need that at this moment we can focus on it later 
and so we need uh, a kind of like a way to uh, trigger each state so every time uh, uh, there's a switching between each state we got we need something to trigger them so that's done with this node called switch on uh, state of game yeah switch on state of game so every time we switch between each state uh, we need to have like a different action or a different code to be followed from there so let's just get uh, started um, on uh, you know uh, switching the states of game uh, and our ready uh, from our ready phase we just want um, you know um, it's important that we set all of this uh, this local variable to the state that we're switching to all the time when we switch into it you know just to be um, you know ensured even though it does switch into that but it's better to set it just like that so I'm just gonna be setting this to be a ready state and it's gonna like um, yeah so I'm just gonna um, comment on this particular code and it's gonna be a ready state just press C or uh, like drag the amount of code that you want to comment and then just press C on it and then you get the comment bubble um, Next is gonna be our countdown state. So we're gonna be, um, let's just drag this variable from here. Okay. Drag and drop, and it's gonna be like, okay, let's go to the countdown state. Now, um, before we go a bit ahead into the countdown state, we need to first develop the logic behind the countdown. So we're gonna be doing that with the help of this node called the event tick. I think I explained about the event tick node last time. Um, when we were having in our ball um, ball uh, event, so yeah, we were using event tick also over here, where uh, this event is called. If you if you just like hover over it, you can see that the event is called over every frame if the ticking is enabled. So yeah, we have been calling this event, so it is uh, enabled uh, over every frame. So let's just get that. Um, event uh, tick um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna develop some kind of logic for our game so now since that uh, we are referencing all of our um, the the we are gonna be adding a lot of states into this game we're gonna be checking all the time if the state of the game is where um, is exactly what we want it to be so that we can do with the help of this function called uh, just drag this variable uh, to get the value of the variable at that time and then check um, if it is countdown state or not and uh, we can do that um, this is a node called equal to enum uh, in brackets um, which will help us to like check if the state of the game is equal to the value that we have chosen at that moment so then let's just get this a branch node yeah? and then plug it into our event tick and that's how our event tick becomes live and present for us to do our work so what we're going to do is now we're going to be setting a, a new variable I'm, I'm going to call it countdown so it's going to be like a variable to set our countdown and let's keep it as a float variable let's compile save and i want the default value to be about three seconds yeah this is like count down for three seconds and then the game starts yeah simple as that and now what we're going to do is we're going to be setting the value of this variable of this countdown uh, with the help of our event tick node uh, that is uh, um, uh, the delta seconds basically so every second we reduce the countdown variable by one and kind of like um, you know set the value of countdown from there so we're going to be getting this the, the present value of countdown uh, we're going to be using a subtracting node and we're going to place plug this in so countdown minus one second equals uh, the new countdown um, value and uh, so what we're going to do um, next so this is the, like the basic countdown logic that we're going to be using over here and you know just for the sake of it I'm just going to be connecting this countdown setting the value here to be 3 at initial itself you know, so every time we switch we have a new value for the variable countdown okay so next um i want to be having i want to have a widget uh, on uh, countdown i'm not doing it immediately but i do want to have it like uh, present later in the uh, game so let's just get that uh, set up also i'm just going to be naming it as count and you know um, i want uh, our widget to reference this value of this variable every time the countdown uh, number goes less so like um, so we're going to be using um, this integer and be setting its value every time the countdown changes so uh, before uh, we be setting the value for three right for three seconds there are two ways to do this since it's only three seconds uh, we can just like uh, 
take branch nodes and you know uh, from there uh, write the code down itself and that's pretty simple i feel so let's just do that instead of um, you know taking a for loop and then getting the number of counts uh, that we are going to be taking and you know trying to get an answer from there um, so so we're going to be taking a greater to equal to sign and for our first value it's going to be three uh, three yeah and I'm going to plug this into our branch node. And if this is true, we're going to be setting our count variable to be number three. Yeah, number three. Um, if it is false, let's bring out another branch node. And we're going to be again taking another condition greater than or equal to. And we're going to take a number two from here. And we're going to plug it in over here. And if it is true, we're going to be setting our count to be number two. Simple as that. And if it is false, again, we're going to be taking another branch out node uh, for a final um, uh, condition. And again, we're going to be calling another uh, greater than or equal to sign. We're going to check if it's greater than or equal to one and plug this condition right here. And we're going to be setting a count value to be number one. Yeah. And if this is false, again, um, then this is uh, we're going to have to go into the playing mode. So let's change our game state that we can do with our function um, that we're going to be calling this event set game state, uh, which would switch the game state from here from um, from countdown to playing. Yeah. So that's the crux of this uh, entire uh, countdown logic. It's as simple as that. No uh, big uh, logic required. Um, and I guess if yeah, this works, looks perfect, looks nice. Uh, if you have any errors, we can like, you know, pop down back over here and you know, I'm just going to rename this comment. I'm just going to comment this as countdown logic. Yeah. So it's going to help us. And if you want, you can like change the color of the comment from here itself. Let's put this a nice bluish purplish color and you know, let's go for the next state. Now in our next state, we're going to be having an oops state where we're going to be setting the state of our game again back to oops. I told you it's very important to do this. Uh, wait, let's comment this code also. And we're going to be naming this countdown. Yeah, and then we move to the next one. We're going to name this as our oops state. And, you know, um, let's add a delay node over here. You know, it's delayed by uh, two seconds. Uh, this is important where um, uh, it doesn't really matter because in the ready state, we are anyway going to be immediately leading on into the countdown state where you have a countdown for three seconds which would then ultimately go into the playing state so we have like a lot of time for the ready and countdown state but we need to keep some amount of time for the for the game to load or pause you know so it's important to keep putting a delay node here and there um where you can just like make sure that the game is like paused for like two seconds before it continues with the next piece of code all right um, so he, uh, here we made a new ball game uh, instance where we have like the play score and the life count. Um, I, if you uh, if you don't remember how to make a game instance, just go to the blueprint, select the blueprint crunch, and search for game instance. Okay. Now, uh, if you have any doubts about what a game instance is, it is nothing um, very. It's it's just like a the the only blueprint in the entire game which is like saved default throughout the entire project so basically it's like your uh, save file of sorts so basically every time you want a place code to be updated or you want like something new to happen or you know like you want to increase the life count or something that's all controllable inside our game instance itself so it's just um you know this is called that game instance like you can uh cast to bp underscore ball gi yeah we got this and we're going to be getting our game instance remember guys this is very very important that we keep calling our game instance if you want to get the game instance or the game mode we have to collect look for the node called get game mode and you know get uh, always put that into plug this in into the power object of the cast otherwise the blueprint may or may not work so we got that and you know, let's just get this as um, we'll get our life count and um, we're going to be reducing uh, our life count. So how do we check that like um, if it is like 
uh, should we go if it's oops do, does that mean do is is a game over or do I have to restart the game so basically we are going to be like switching between ready and game over states so we're just going to check if the life count is less than or equal to zero because if it is um then we are going to be um you know switching over to the next blueprint so i'm just going to call out a branch node from here yeah and yeah i'm just going to plug in this condition to this branch node and if it is true then we are going to check change our game state to game over yeah and if it is false mm, okay, sorry set game state gonna be setting our game state to ready yep i think that's perfect yeah so this is gonna compile save it and i guess yeah this works perfectly fine for our uh oops blueprint i'm just gonna drag this over here and then comment it i'm gonna write this as the oops part of our blueprint so we're done with um oops uh, we're done with three states of our game so let's just go and uh, finish off for the other states. So now we have a game over state. Uh, and for the game over state, uh, we're going to be uh, making a widget for ourselves. So let's just get into the widget blueprint. Um, if you guys don't remember how to make a widget blueprint, uh, go right click on in the content browser, scroll down to your user interface and click on widget blueprint. And just click on the most common one user widget. Yeah. And I'm gonna name this widget as play again. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, speed run in uh, uh, this process of creating a widget because I've already explained how to do that before. So first and first, it's important just drag a canvas panel into our game. And then after that, we're gonna be adding a text. I want I want the text to be written as I want uh, no uh, I want the word the text uh, play again written in big words. Yeah. Gonna do that play again and i want my font to be my ethnocentric font because i want like a common font for the entire game um let's gonna make this 64 and I change our anchor to be the middle and you know um wait let's click the play again i'm gonna click on size to content so that we can like fit the entire box with the selection box of the text like this and then I'm just going to like drag it and you know place it somewhere on top somewhere like this you play again yeah something like that and yeah so next thing what we're going to do is we're going to deal with buttons uh, we haven't done this before so um, I'll explain how to use buttons in our widget so I'm calling one button uh, into our widget uh, by just searching for it in the palette and we have our first button I'm going to name it our play button basically if you want to play you're going to click on this button and uh, you know i'm just gonna hmm i'm gonna anchor it to be this and i want to increase the size of it a bit so i'm just gonna make this 300 and i'm gonna make this probably around 100 i want the button to be as big as this yeah so i'm just gonna drag it here and you know it's gonna be put here and uh, yeah so let's do something nice let's add a text to this button so um, you search for text in your palette and instead of putting it in the canvas panel and having it all the way over here like you know on top again uh, which makes it a pain um, to just put this on the button so sometimes that makes the button non-interactive of sorts so let's not do that and you know just going to do something called parenting it to the button itself so just like drag it and uh, hover over the play button and just drop it over there and then you'll find like the small drop down arrow on the side for the button itself so that you can change uh, and now you can see that before it was over here now the text is inside the button itself so exactly what we wanted and now we're just gonna put a uh, written just gonna write play over here and just gonna make this as our ethnocentric font and increase the size this is to free freestyle yeah this looks good uh, 43 let's keep this as 40 yeah that looks good and you know i don't like white so much so i'm just gonna change colors it's gonna make it a nice dark red yeah uh, so yeah we get to play again now i'm just going to duplicate this button so that it doesn't make you know give us a pain of creating this button again and we're just going to have the word quit written over here 
so it's gonna right quick and I'm gonna be changing the color to something like blue just leave it as it is and yep yeah, we're done so we actually have a play button or a quit button so it's gonna be using this widget uh, and we're gonna be calling this widget every time we pause the game or we finish the game or we want to quit the game no we're gonna be just calling this uh, widget again and again let's rename the second button to quit and yep we are done I guess with this um, now let's just get in on to coding these two buttons he's gonna make this a bit more center yeah so there are two ways to the code this button the hover over the button and then click on this or uh, events you can see on the bottom and press on click so basically you get an event um, that occurs every time you click on the play button and yeah you can do that from here itself in the you can switch between design and graph here and you know you can just like select the quit button and you can get that event also ready okay so quit button i think that's pretty simple uh, what we want to do with the quit button uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check if the game uh, if you want to quit the game or not so it's just gonna call the quit game yeah it's just gonna call this node quit game and that's as simple as that um for the on the play button where what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh first uh what we're gonna do uh is that we're gonna reduce the life count so we're gonna cast to ball game instance because that's where our life count is stored so we have our game instance we're gonna get game instance from here so we got a life count and um, yeah so we're just gonna call this and we're gonna find a life count so get life count yeah and um, no way no we don't have to get it we need to set it my bad so we need to reset the life count uh, using every time we click on play again or you know restart the level so we're gonna be setting our life count to uh, number three because that's our default number of lives and we're also gonna be setting our player score so set player score and we're gonna put this into the target okay no wait this is the wrong node my bad just gotta get from here set player score and we're just gonna no, wait, my bad yeah just gonna pull this from here uh, so we have both the targets and we're gonna set this to a number zero yep so now we're done with this uh, part of the play button but there's two more things that we must add into our play button that's really important first thing is that we need to set our mouse cursor to be shown so let's just get that part also into it if you cannot find the set mouse cursor just like uh, untick context sen sensitive and you'll find the uh, this uh, function called set show mouse co cursor which will look like this and um, yes so we have been casting it to the uh game mode so we we don't want to show the game mo mo mouse control over here we want it to go back into the game so what we're just going to do is we're going to take this to a uh, untick this so that it will be false because we don't want the mouse and this target we need to uh, give it to the player controller so yeah so there are two player controllers so take the one with uh not in player state so let's just get context sensitive player controller let's get the player controller you'll get this one uh, with the player index 0 return value and we, we have to set one more thing we need to set the game mode only yeah set input mode game only we have to set these two before we move on uh, with our blueprint so yeah we think we're done with this we're gonna compile say and um, next thing what we can do is we can open level we can like open uh, the same level or if you want you can open another level it's all upon you you want to open a previous level or you want to open the very first level you can just like name it as it is uh, i've just opened our uh, the same level that we are working on so that you know just restart the game again from the beginning yeah so we got this so open level by name and i think that's it uh, for now let's just keep this open in case we need it and let's just call this part into our ball so no wait uh, into a game mode not bad. Uh, game mode so we're going to be creating our own function called ask play again 
Yeah. So we're gonna call this function every time we need to display that widget, which would be a lot of times in this um, game. So let's just go into the Ask Play game mode. And yeah, so first thing over there, uh, what we did over here is we set the mouse cursor to be false. But here we need the mouse cursor back because we need to select the buttons. So we are going to be, uh, again, you can untick context sensitive if you can't find the node and then set show mouse cursor. And then we're going to stick this to be a true because we need the mouse cursor. And then we're going to be setting our input to UI more only. Yeah. So I think that works perfectly. We're now going to get our player controller. The context sensitive this time because this is important and select it. Uh, put this uh, for both the player controller here and for the target of this. So we are done with this and now we need to create our widget. So just like search for the node, create widget, select the play again widget and yep, we're done. Um, let's, uh, it's important like um, I think we may need to reference this widget again and again. So I think it's best if we promote this to a variable and uh, name this as play again widget set this as a variable and then we can call we can add this to the viewport this is what we're going to do add to viewport and that's it we are done with our uh, play again widget and i think yeah, that works perfectly oh yeah one more thing that we need to do is that every time we click on the play button or the quit button we want the widget to disappear which we haven't defined after we clicked on the button because until doesn't do it by themselves so we got to do it and it's very easy we can just like uh, look for this remove from parent this is the node that will help us remove our widget it's as simple as that so yep we are done with our play again widget and if you want um, after a, like we set some more input settings we can see that widget being used um, otherwise we can try to, oh, oh, it's okay. we'll, we'll, go, we'll come back to that after we develop a little bit more of our code yeah. So we have a life count. If you forgot to edit this, it has to be a number three. Save content browser. Uh, yep. So I think we need to now go back to our event graph, and we're just gonna go call our uh, from our uh, not from the from the game over again. We're just gonna uh, first of all we have to set this. I told you over and over again. It's important to set this variable every time you switch it. So just gonna come put this as uh, game over and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a delay as usual as I told before it's important to have a little bit of delay between our nodes between while switching and we're just gonna um, ask a uh, play again we're just gonna call that function it's as simple as that so we can just like call this function every time because I know we're gonna be needing it more often and then comment this to be our game over state yes so we are done with uh, i think four states in the four, yeah, four states of our game and let's finish on the next four as quickly as possible uh, for a level completed again we're just gonna first set this variable uh, set state of game and we're just gonna connect it from here to here and we're gonna put this as our level completed so level completed, we can um, design it a bit more at the end, but uh, mainly what we need to do is uh, we need to check if the game is completed or not. That is only done by um, completing all of our levels. So for now, since we have only one level, let's not work on the logic for that level. Um, you know, it's just gonna put a delay node uh, for like five seconds, and then we're gonna put a game completed for the moment. Let's put like two seconds here, two seconds, and then we're gonna be uh, set game state to game completed. As simple as that. Nothing much to do over here, and then we're done. Um, just gonna put this as our level completed node. We can uh, workshop on this a bit more later on when we have a bit more levels. If you're gonna de design another level. Otherwise, we can just leave it as it is over here. And then next, the next thing that we are gonna be um, designing is the playing level, which is the most important of the all the states. 
so we're just gonna get this and we're gonna be like setting this to the playing state yeah so we got this ready and yeah what's important is that now we have to develop a little bit of logic in our ball blueprint um before we go ahead with this um basically every time we start the game i want the ball to have some more randomness you know i don't i don't want it to be like stuck in the same place or the same point i want it to move a bit you know uh, in different directions every time we start the game that's how that's how it worked in the previous game so in the in the original game i mean so let's just have that same logic built uh, in this ball blueprint as well um so you guys already know how to call uh, events like you have a custom event and then you can call it wherever you want whenever you want in whichever blueprint you want but there is another way to do this um with the help of event dispatchers as you can see at the last thing the last thing at the bottom so we're going to be using an event dispatcher this time to be calling our game uh, you know we to restart uh, the level so after we set this level i want to create an event dispatcher i'm going to be calling it start playing and then i'm going to compile save and i'm just going to call this uh call this event uh, it's not an event i want i want to dispatch this event and how do i do that over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using our event begin play okay I cannot find it. I can't find my event begin play. Let me just call it again from right clicking event begin play. Here it is, and we're just gonna call uh, that event. So that you can do with casting. So we're gonna cast to ball game mode. And then again get game mode. We've got the game mode. Cast it to the game mode. and now what we're going to do is we're going to start binding that particular event so we're going to bind call, uh, start playing bind event to start playing so we just have to add another custom event to this event itself um so that every time the start playing occurs uh, basically it's just like a call function so you, this function goes to this blueprint which invokes the custom event to play it's as simple as that so i'm going to be creating a custom event and i want to call this ball reset position i'm going to be or you know what let's not name it this you know let's make it another name um let's let's name it as ball start playing you know i think that sounds better yeah ball start playing and you know this is bring this a bit up so that it doesn't disturb our event tick node and we're just going to call uh, start playing okay no way yeah now we just have to attach a function to this and we are done with it so what exactly uh, are we going to be doing over here is every time we want to uh, we we want to like call the balls to start playing we're going to set our at location to the default location in the world so we can just like drag it out promote to it a variable and call it the ball reset position i'm going to compile this and i'm going to find the world location of a ball which is from here i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to go back to the ball reset position and i'm going to paste it over here it's as simple as that just paste all the values of all the all the x y z values over here and then we have it stored in this one neat variable uh for our reset position and uh, we don't have to work on sweep hit result or anything in this uh, in this uh, blueprint we're just going to like call it and we're going to be setting a new direction from here so i want to set direction yeah so we got the direction now before we do this um i want to add as i told before i want to add a bit of randomness right so i want i'm going to be doing that with the help of a random function so i'm going to be calling a random float in range a uh, minimum value to be around minus 1 maximum value to be 1 and i'm going to be making this into a vector cuz this is a float value so make vector vector yeah so we got this and i don't want it to be connected to the x um, i want it to be connected to the y now if you remember what if you know why i'm doing this that means you really know how to make the previous blueprint of 
the ball physics that's because we were only having the ball move in the x y axis and not in the z axis and we also already have a minimum x values that ensures the ball will always move up no matter what value of y we have so that's why we are only going to be setting this random variable in y to just um, know how like you know we we have like an arc so basically if it will go in this direction or if it will go in uh, like uh, how do i explain uh, yeah i can explain like this if the ball will go in this direction or it will go in this direction we're just going to be like randomizing this value but keeping this as constant so we it will move in the up top direction but it will move with some kind of like uh, you know some some kind of like float something like that so we have this set we have a reactor location and as usual we're gonna have to normalize this it's very important normalize kind of like rounding off a value to make the uh, physics a bit more smoother at the end it looks better that way and we are done we are done with our ball start playing and reset so you know i think it's like a blob of code over here i'm just going to take this all and yeah so we selected this and i'm going to be collapsing it to a function and i'm going to call this reset uh, reset ball position yeah i think this works perfect compile save and yes so we just have all of our function in a neat uh, in a neat function like uh, everything is like completely arranged properly and then yeah that works perfectly save and now i think we're done with the ball blueprint uh, for the moment we have all of our uh, stuff all of the events everything is done over here if we need anything we'll come back if there's an error we'll come back so let's just move on okay so we are done we're done with our playing state let's comment this i'm just gonna call this playing and yes i think we are done with our next state and then let's move on to our next event mm. Yeah, I think this works. This works. It looks perfect. And yep, then we can go ahead from here. The ball, ball game. Yeah, let's go. So now next, uh, next thing that we're gonna be doing. Uh, yep. Yes, it looks, looks, looks. Yep. So next, uh, we're gonna be changing our next state, which is a post state. Is gonna be calling a set state of game. We're gonna be setting this value. I'm just gonna be setting it to be post. As simple as that. And uh, for our post, we're just gonna set the game post. Nothing else. We just wanna pause the game for a little while. So set game post. Just, there's a node exactly. There's a node for this also. And then you can just like pause it and then compile, save. And we are done with the pause part also. So we're done with the pause, and now final final state before we can move on a little bit into the widgets. Um, final state is our. Let's just comment this before that. Uh, pause. And then the final state is the game completed state, the game over state, um, where we have the final part of the game. I'm just gonna be calling the state set state of the game and I'm just gonna call this node I'm gonna go up and plug it into the game completed state you can do it backwards you can plug in execute nodes whichever way any nodes for that matter whichever game way you want and uh, yeah just gonna add a little bit of delay I want I want a delay of like two seconds here before I want to quit the game and okay let's not quit the game directly let's just call this function again where the player has a choice to Either, you know, if you want to play the game again, you can just click on play or you can quit the game from here itself. That's why I told this function comes in handy. You can like reuse it again and again whenever you want. And let's just call this game completed. And guys, we are done with our game states. We have set all of our major states of the game. And I think we can move on uh, from here a little bit. Compile, save, keep compiling and saving your code, guys, because it's important. Otherwise, you might lose some code, and then you might, uh, if the if the editor crashes or if you have like a lot of bugs, it's really hard to debug them later on. So you immediately get to know that it, there's an error in your code if you compile it at that moment. So yep, we are done with all of our blueprints for the states. I think um, let's just go over uh, a little bit more. 
in our ball blueprint itself um we just want to add some things in all of our blueprints um basically we just want to trigger we just need something to keep triggering all of these states you know cuz that's important so um, let's go back to our ball blueprint and this going to look over here that's why i left a lot of code over here so basically what we're going to do uh, is we're going to check again and again um i told you that we have to keep checking if the ball is in playing mode or not and then only this entire thing is useful otherwise the ball will just keep moving at the start of the game so that's why we have game states and uh in the game i mean in the in the code so cars to ball game mode I'm gonna get this get game mode got it and just gonna pull this up a bit here and then we're gonna check so we are gonna get player uh, no get state of game we're gonna check if it's equal to if it's equal to playing then only the ball should move and we're just gonna add a branch node over here branch and then connect it here and here that's it as simple as that we are done with our uh condition checking also and yeah we just wanted to add this this we have added this into our ball let's check our uh, next blueprint which is uh uh the game instance now nah, i don't think we need it for now is check the bounds okay so in our bounds blueprint we're just going to check if we need to add it or not yes we need to add it because we need to make sure that um after every time we lose a life we need to set it to oops state so we're going to get game mode again um uh, bye game so uh, cast to ball game mode just gonna get that we're gonna get our get game mode we got that and we let's just convert this to a pure cast don't want to add a lot of execute nodes because otherwise the game might get a bit laggy and we're gonna be okay we gotta get it from here set game state gotta call it from here gonna set it set it to our oops state and yep so we got the thing that triggers the oops state also so we done with the bounds um let's check the hit brick i think the hit brick might have some states that we need to check um hmm the hit brick we have okay i think there are some things that we have to add in the decrement hit points before we go ahead so okay so first things first um we need to decrease the brick count uh, if you remember we had already made this uh, function in our previous tutorial so we're going to just going to do the same um just going we we have to call it over here i think uh, that's not added so let's just do that if it goes true it's going to call get uh no well, first let's just cast cast to ball game mode let's call that convert this to a pure cast when we're going to just get game mode and from here i just want to call decrement brick count function let's got plug this in here and um, yep a final and always we need to destroy the actor at the end so yeah so we got the brick count and next thing that's important is to set the player score so again we're going to be uh, cast to ball game gi let's get the game instance i'm going to now get game instance we got the game instance and as oh wait oh, i'm going to convert this to a pure cast and as game instance we are going to get player score yeah just got that um you know what's just convert this to pure cast it's all right we just add another execute node here and this and from the player score we have to um we have to add the brick count basically the brick points to the player score so just add a add board node just plug in the brick points here then compile save it and um we have to set the player score from here so set player score set it um 
want to be this value not that one and we need to bring the target here and click on this and yep i think we're done um with this and uh, this will lead to our destroy actor so yep we are done we have added this play score destroy actor yep i think this works perfectly um then uh, should be done with the hit brick this is check the event graph if you need to add anything event graph nope i think this works and yep so let's close the hit brick and let's move on to the paddle yep we got, we got to check the paddle because obviously paddle will have some kind of blueprint we need to check upon um in our event graph yep we have to check for playing over here obviously let's check the event graph I've added some space over here so that uh, you know we can check for our uh, playing. Uh, so get game mode. Okay, cast the ball game mode. This is important to keep checking that. And then get game mode, and uh, we have to check for the state of the game. That's all. State of game. Get state of game check if it is equal to um playing yeah playing and i'm just gonna put this a bit more here and I'm just gonna call out a branch node and plug in this condition here simple as that compile saved yes it works um so we have um this part also set for the paddle and um yeah we think we're done just check the decrement lives once um in our decrement lives we have to set the game over part so let's just do that also cast to ball game more again I, I this might feel repetitive but it's important that you keep uh, making sure uh these small kind of stuff are also visible otherwise uh you might uh it'll be hard for you to debug them later and then we're going to ch change our game state to game over directly Let's compile save mm, yep this works perfect 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 i think this works compile save and then we're just going to close this and, and uh, let's just go back let's see we don't need the brick counts again i guess yeah let's just go back to the mm, Oh yeah, we we didn't define uh the brick count. This has to set level completed if it is true. Uh, set game state. Yeah, we forgot to add this part. Uh, yep. So I think we have all the triggers for each uh for each uh, event that we have. We have all the triggers ready. We have all the triggers ready in place. Uh, all the events ready. Everything is done um just like a final few more things before we uh, get into the next part of the tutorial um so we have the paddle the hit by ball and the, yes so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be making a new blueprint which is gonna be uh our player controller so um we're gonna be needing a player controller for this um um blueprint so this is open the player controller ball game controller and uh, how do you how do you make that so go click on blueprint class click on player controller and then you're gonna name it so ball game controller i'm just gonna name the file to be this and yeah you don't have to do anything in the viewport for you i mean uh, uh functionality will be in the event graph um so let's just go back to our project settings let's go to the input input here yeah. yeah and uh yeah so we have to add these two new mappings i'll just remove them and then add it again for you go to the action mappings not the axis mappings the action ones because the action ones are the ones where uh, it immediately does action after you click on a particular key whereas the axis mappings gives you uh like you know the mouse x and y or the analog sticks in a joystick or uh, the analog sticks in a and a VR controller, those kind of stuff comes in the axis mappings. But action mappings are like more over for the for the action that you're doing, not for the camera movement. 
So we're just going to make a new action mapping and we're going to call it LMB input. I'm just going to make this left mouse button basically. And we're just going to get a left mouse button for this first one. Yeah, so like that. Um, we can have another one just for the sake of it. I'm just gonna put a space. Just like you can see, if you want, if you want, if you don't, if your left mouse button is not working, or if you're not connected to the mouse, or something like that, and you're playing with a trackpad or something, you can have I don't know any reason. You guys can have, and then we're gonna have another a quit kind of a, a mapping where um, we are gonna use the escape key of the keyboard. Or we can use even something like this. Let's just add two keys for it. I'm just gonna put a backspace for no reason. Or we can have like V, M, you know, any any key, whatever you wanna have. And you remember, you don't have to save anything over here. It automatically gets saved in the project settings. And um, because it's global, these variables are accessed globally throughout the entire game. So let's go back to a ball game controller. Compile, save. And we're just going to be calling uh, uh, both of these um, blueprints here. Just going to call our quit quit action event. If we click on the quit, uh, first things first, we have to cast to our ball game mode because that's where our ask play again um, function is stored. So we're just going to ask play again if you want to quit and quit. Otherwise, if you press escape, it will take you to that widget. Where you have to press yes to play or quit to quit the game. So ask play again. That's it. Simple as that. We have the game mode, and obviously we have to set this game state to be paused. Let's set game state. I'm gonna set it to be paused. And let's go compile and save this code. Oh yeah, we forgot to add the target. Target this. That's why you saw the error over here. Um, I'll, I'll just show you guys the error again. Uh, compile of the ball game controller failed. Target must have a connection. So this is the target and then you see you have to have a connection and it has to be referenced to the ball game mode. So you can just track the ball game mode from here and then compile, save and the blueprints working perfectly. Um, next we are going to have our LMB input. So just get that action event and uh, yep. So um, what we're going to do with that LMB input is we got to check if it is, uh, oh, what do you say, um, um, if it is uh, kind of like uh, set to our ready game, we're going to have to check that first, we're going to get game mode again. I know it seems like futile to cast it to the same things, like up and down, we're casting to the same thing for no reason, but yeah, just leave it as it is, it's all right, and we're just going to... Um, get state of the game and then we're going to check if it is in the ready state or not so equal to num so ready and as usual we're going to take out a branch and connect this to the branch and if it is then we have our final trigger for the game states which is going to be our uh, countdown state so basically this is going to tell us when to go to the countdown state so here we have this and we are done. So basically you got to click on the mouse or on the space bar to go from ready to countdown state. So till then you guys have all the free time to, you know, like mentally uh, ready yourself before you start the game. So I think we are done with the ball game controller. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be added. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, yeah, let's just check our world settings for the game mode. We haven't overrided it, so we need to override it to our ball game mode. And our default pawn is the paddle, our HUD is the ball game HUD, the player controller is the ball game controller, the game state, um, we don't have one, player state, we don't have one, spectator pawn, we don't have one. And we can just like save this, and we can save this, compile, save. So we are done, I think we are done. That's awesome. Um, let's just see what else that we need to add from over here. Um, we have, I think, everything done. Okay, yeah. So we're, we're done with almost everything. Let's just add a little bit of SFX in our game because that makes all of our games more and more cooler at the end. 
right so so let's go um i have some sound effects which i have added you can just like drop it um from there so this would be a, a kind of like a file it's best to add a dot wav file like if you see at the bottom dot wav file uh, you can you, it's better to kind of like use those kind of files in in unreal engine and then if you just right click over here and then cl click on create a queue and then you can use a, a sound uh, asset in your um blueprint it's important to try uh, getting the uh, sfx like that um if you if you're using uh inbuilt sfx they usually have it already uh done like um, they already have it um inside the blueprint as queues so let's just use this one i want to go I'll, i can set this inside the event graph um where 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 will i put this hmm okay so we're gonna go to our game um yep i think we can just put it over here itself that looks better best uh yep yeah, it's gonna add a uh, play sound 2d uh, and we're just gonna look for that asset um most beautiful space and then click on the q1 not the not the first one you gotta click on the q1 um most yeah just click on the q not the wave but the q and then select that you have the asset and you have like a multiple stuff if you want like increase and uh, put the volume a little low you don't want it to impact the game a lot we just want it to be there background music kind of a thing and yeah we have this compile save so we have this ready in our event begin play and anything else that we need to ask kind of like bg music is ready in our game so let's just put this back here mm. yep let's uh, let's add some effects also for our brick um where do we add that uh nope not this one um nope it should be in our hit brick yeah so we're gonna we're gonna go search for our hit brick again um if it's okay yeah so we're gonna be adding sfx from here so let's just um go into our hit points yeah we, we can add our fx from here itself so like i want to add an effect every time um the ball hits the uh, hits the brick i want to add some kind of like a weird sound effect so i'm just going to play sound 2d again um yeah you know i'm just going to add some kind of like a retro do we have a pickup sound okay we can we can just add something like this you can just like check it if you want or you just click on it um you can you can add whatever sound effects you want i'm just going to add some kind of pickup sound over here and um, what i'm going to do after this is i want to add sound effects like i want to add an explosion over here like a very minute explosion so i'm going to make a it's it's a bit into effects also you can see a little bit of effects in the game so let's just get some kind of like an explosion so we'll just use explosion one for this um probably reduce the volume a bit let's put this at 0.5 don't want it to be too sound loud yeah and uh, let's add our fx so how do we add fx we're going to be using this node called spawn emitter at location all right so we're going to be using this node and uh, take auto destroy or there is usually take basically the effect will destroy itself after we used it and we can just add a explosion these are usually inbuilt um assets that you have otherwise if you if you use go to the unreal marketplace you can find lots of assets free ones also uh, from the infinity blade effects and then uh, power packs and everything so you can add a lot of stuff from there itself you can just check it out if you want a tutorial on that also i can help you out just message me any time i'll help you guys out and um, yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to add a explosion over here and we're going to be putting it exactly in exactly where our actor gets spawned so we're just going to get actor location and we are done compile save and uh, so we have an explosion and uh, let's see that in our game 
um, I'm just going to directly add uh, go over here to our hit brick uh, sorry we're in the wrong settings I don't want it to be 8 let's just put this as 1 and yeah, just get 10 points for that and uh, so if you can see okay 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 there's some mistakes some error I guess why is the ball not moving forward okay Um, let's put rest 2 and check that. Try. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay. Okay. So the ball is not moving forward for some reason. Um, let's check why that is happening. Let me try to debug the code. Uh, I think it's because of this reset position that we added um, let's get into this code and let's just plug the same value to the x compile save and try running it should work this time yeah it works okay um okay okay let's see what just happened over here why didn't we get any of our emitter spawn um let's let's try debugging this just put like two two and then try this again yep i think uh it works perfectly uh, i heard a sound i don't know if you guys could hear it but when it hits the final in the final final part we're not able to see the explosion for some reason um saved i don't know why we're not able to see i think it's because my laptop is not able to handle it's lagging a lot so let's not add the explosion this time let's just uh, directly destroy this actor and try again and yeah okay okay i think there's some problem with the uh with this area if i am right okay hmm Okay, you know, just like remove this part of the code and try again. Compile, save, and then try. Yep, it works. It works perfectly. Um, okay, so we're having some trouble in our game instance code for some reason um okay we'll just debug this uh later otherwise we can always just you can guys can just change the variable type instead of uh putting it into the game instance you guys can have it inside itself and uh, wait before that um just gonna get game instance no uh set game pause no okay um Spawn emitter, yes. Yeah, spawn emitter is gonna have the emitter for now uh, at location. Just do the same thing so that you guys can see the particle effects and uh, get actor location. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. So we have everything ready. So and then we're just gonna add the explosion, compile, save, and yeah, we're just gonna remove this part because for some reason it isn't working for now, but we, are, we can get back to that later. Mm -hmm. yep looks all right 
and then we, we have a play again if you want to play again you can play again or if you want to quit you can quit the game so yep that's basically uh, all that we have in this tutorial uh, for now um, we have made a lot of progress and probably uh, um, you guys can like build up your own levels if you have any doubts about making your own levels just ping me on whatsapp anytime you want i'll be there to help you out uh, you guys can just like um, as i told you before um, every time you want to change a level you can open a new level otherwise uh, in the game instance itself you can add some code or uh, some code or something that would help you in, in increase your level um, you know stuff like that um, like if you uh, you can just use this node called open level by name and uh, have a new level open up every time you complete a level uh, which you can uh, define um, as I said over here in our event graph okay. uh, not this one in the ball game mode yeah, my bad inside the ball game mode yeah here you can just have a, a, every time the level is completed you can open a new level you can just like open level by name and open a new level every time you complete a level you can just like main two or something like that and go to the next level something like that you can just keep doing stuff like that and uh, yeah let's let's just do one last thing before we uh, end the tutorial um, let's make one last map um, um, that is the main menu map. So I've already made a main menu. I'm just gonna show you guys how to make it again. So I'm gonna delete this and make it again. So open level. I'm just gonna name this main menu. Something like that. Let's go open this. Save selected. And now we're gonna open the main level. So here main level is completely dark that's because we have literally nothing in our world like there's nothing if you if you want to add light or something you can just go to the lights add a skylight and then um you can add a sky sphere in the visual effects sky atmosphere and um volumetric cloud exposure height fog there's a lot of stuff inside lights oh yeah we need to add directional light also so you can get some kind of light into the game but we don't need these stuff for our main menu because main menu doesn't depend on that we're just gonna have something like a kind of like um what do you say uh, a widget which which is being called every single moment of the game so let's just go back you know let's go back to our main menu and um yep let's go back to our hud where's our hud yeah, here and uh, we're just gonna create a new widget we're gonna call it our main menu widget yeah, so you can create a main menu with a widget itself. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. So it's going to call it main menu UI and let's open this up. So this going to be calling a canvas panel. It's always important that you keep calling a canvas panel. In a previous version of um, Unreal Engine, uh, we didn't have that. We, it was all, all automatically always and always automatically opened up in your uh, canvas but uh, yeah it is important that we keep calling the canvas panel in this case so yeah so we have um, uh, I'm just gonna m explain how to make a basic main menu over here I'm just gonna first add an image it's gonna add an image and into the canvas just drop it here I'm just gonna like increase the size this is name it directly from here so I want it to be a 1280 no uh, a 1920 2080 yeah. so that it perfectly fits over our uh, image and then um, just get our brush your image value will be stored inside brush and then look for the image that you want so I want something like uh, stars or something I don't know just go check stars You can add like any literally any image that you want. You can add something like this Milky Way galaxy. So we're going with a kind of like a space theme over here. And uh, first things first, we need our text. So we want the game name to be there. I'm just gonna add a simple game name. 
We're just gonna add a simple game name. Uh, Atari Breakout. And we're gonna add the ethnocentric font. Let's make it a bit big. Oh, damn, this looks so big. Let's put some kind of weird color. Mm, let's put another reddish color. Reddish. Something like that. Let's increase the red. And decrease the green. And kind of like make it a nice. Yep, this looks perfect. And. Uh, Let's click on size to content. Uh, wait, no. Uh, for the text, we want it to size to content. And yeah, so we can just drag it out in the middle. We have the title of our game. And then we have the buttons. Um, we can just like add buttons. Play button. Uh, no, wait, sorry. Button. We'll just call it. Uh, it's going to have a play. Simple, this is the exact same thing that we did before. Um, it's gonna have a play button, we're gonna have a text in the play button. Um, it's gonna call text play, and uh, it's gonna write play over here. Okay, just leave it as it is. It's gonna have play written over here itself. Play, and uh, yeah, so if uh, as I said before, you can have like zero, uh, no, not here, but here you can have like zero opacity in this in the background so you can have just the word play written on it and if you click on that it opens up and uh, then we have the text i'm just gonna make this ethnocentric again it's gonna increase the size and let's keep this another color let's keep this blue something like that and yep that works perfectly for us and uh, so i'm just gonna do that text and uh, yep, I think this works. Do we have a size to content here? Nope, we don't. It's all right, it's not really needed. Oh, wait, do we have here? Yeah, we have it. Oh, cool. And then we just drag it out. So, yeah, play button here, and then copy paste. I'm oh, sorry, copy paste for our quit button. We're gonna be having a quit button, so quit. And the text is also gonna be quit. Um, yeah, and we can just like change the color again. Have something like green because we never had that before, and just place it over here. Yeah, and then we can even size this one. Oh wait. Uh, uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't kind of like parent it. Oh, my bad. Yep. Yeah, now now it works perfectly. We selected the wrong one. And now we have the play button, the quick button, and uh, yeah, we can just have the basic settings. Go to the graph um, from the play. You can just like go down otherwise from the button itself and then click on on click uh, play. And then we can like check uh, for the settings. Um, we can like, uh, yeah, so here exactly as I said, we have the open level by name and we open our first level, which is main one. And then we set input mode to UI only. Uh, sorry, uh, this one is for the game. We set input mode uh, game only. And we're going to get a player controller. Get player controller. We're done with this. And uh, same way for quit. Just going to click on quit. We're going to quit game simple as that compile save should be done with the main menu ui and uh, yep um one last thing for do to do in the main menu you can like close all of this because then most of the game part is built and uh, we can have uh, go to this uh, option over here and open level blueprint for your main menu uh, basically this is the blueprint for your entire level uh, which is what we are designing over here um I'll just explain exactly what you need to do over here. First things first, we need to create our main menu widget. So just gonna go to create main, okay, so create widget first. And then select the main menu, main menu UI, and then you can like add this to viewport. And you can set input mode, uh, 
UI only here because um, we want the person or uh, the player to select the buttons if he wants to play uh, or not and then get the player controller for him and yep that's it we have like a small main menu also ready and yeah we also have to set show mouse cursor uh, yeah I told you if you can't find that click context sensitive and you'll be able to find it and yeah we are done save uh okay wait for oh yeah target target forgot we got plug it in this uh, we're done and then so if you click on this and then you click on play you get to this level and then you can have the game started from here and then the rest of the things is upon you um i could the game just now uh and uh, the rest of the stuff is all upon you you can make maps like i have a lot of maps made over here like this is another level or you know something like this where you have this is another level um you know stuff like that uh, different textures different um, styles i made it like all different seven types of planets kind of a texture and then you can just like continue on from here right so that's it about it that's all we have in our um, first tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope, hope you guys learned something from it and um, if you guys have been following me um, you guys would have had uh, your first real game project also in hand in unreal engine also and also one more thing um, before i um, quit uh, um, like uh, end this tutorial um if you guys want a package or, you know if you want to if you want to uh, if you want to put all of this into a particular um project you know you you want to you want to execute this game you want to make an exe file from this game so that is done with the help with um um no okay, not this one project no build build yeah, yeah. So here you first you build all of your levels and then after that um, um, you can just like export it from here itself after it builds it directly takes you to a level uh, export exportation and uh, yeah you can then export it from there and uh, kind of like um, use it uh, as an ex ex exe kind of a file so that's it about it for this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it um if you guys have any doubts uh just reach out to me on my whatsapp and i'll explain everything back to you and yep that's it thank you guys for joining